From the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba, this is From the South. I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada, and these are the news. Thousands of workers took to the streets of Lima, Peru's capital, to reject plans by the parliament to ease labor outsourcing. Workers from various federations and unions grouped in the Confederation of Peruvian Workers marched peacefully to the Legislative Palace, shouting close the Congress and constitute now to reject the decision of the Economic Commission. They demanded the respect of the rights severely affected during almost three decades of application of an economic policy enshrined in the neoliberal constitution of 1993. Outsourcing is the hiring of personnel through companies that sell the labor force and profit from the mediation, while avoiding addressing rights. For this reason, the CGTP and all the workers at national level who are very worried about this decision of the Congress are protesting today and they are going to do so until they achieve the archiving of the change of this bill because we consider that it is a norm that could be published against the working class. Here, we are not rejecting outsourcing at all. The only thing that is being done is to put limits on the fact that the main areas of companies cannot be outsourced. We regret that there is a business sector in our country that does not agree that we have gone through a health crisis in which thousands of workers have died and thousands of workers are still suffering from this disease that we have not yet emerged from the health crisis and yet they do not want to share the wealth that even in pandemic have achieved with our work. Also, the Peruvian Congress will define on Thursday the petition to question the Prime Minister Aníbal Torres for the extension of the state of emergency in the framework of the COVID-19 pandemic. As justification for the request against Torres, it is stated that the presidency of the Council of Ministers did not carry out an analysis of the temporality, reasonability, and necessity of the measures applied for the containment of the pandemic. In the same way, Torres will be questioned to explain his allusions to the early general elections. In this context, analysts assure that this motion is another attempt of the Peruvian right wing in the parliament to sabotage the mandate of President Pedro Castillo. And now we update information on the constitute process in Chile as the plenary of the convention drafting the new constitution approved with a large majority the rule that prevents the re-election of the president for a second term. With 124 votes in favor, zero against, and three abstentions, the congresspersons accepted the article which establishes that the President of the Republic elected for the period 2022-2026 may not stand for re-election for the following period. Also, it provides that he shall continue in office with the Constitution powers for which he was elected. This had been one of the most controversial articles in Chilean society, as re-election is not contemplated in the constitution still in force, drafted in 1980, during the military dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. In Mexico, the Congress of the State of Southern Baja California approved the decriminalization of abortion up to 12 weeks of gestation. With this decision, there are now 10 states in Mexico that have decriminalized abortion. The initiative, which is a reform to the penal code and the state health law, passed with 16 votes in favor and three against. On May 26, the president of the Centro Mujeres AZ in La Paz, Baja California, had introduced a proposal to decriminalize abortion up to 14 weeks gestation. However, the final draft that got approved set the limit at 12 weeks. U.S. President Joe Biden demanded the lawmakers respond to communities by passing far-reaching limits on guns, calling on Congress to reinstate the 1994 ban on semi-automatic, rapid-fire assault weapons and high-capacity magazines that expired in 2004, after massacres in Texas and New York. 
addressing to the nation, the head of state pushed for other measures, including strengthening background checks for gun buyers, enacting red flag laws, and also which allow authorities to confiscate guns for a period of time if someone is a threat or exhibits mental instability and safe storage laws. The president also pushed to repeal the immunity that protects gun manufacturers from liability. The measures Biden advocated are unlikely to win approval in the politically divided Congress, where lawmakers for years have been at odds over gun legislations. We need to ban assault weapons in high-capacity magazines. And if we can't ban assault weapons, then we should raise the age to purchase them from 18 to 21. Strengthen background checks. Enact safe storage law and red flag laws. Repeal the immunity that protects gun manufacturers from liability. Address the mental health crisis, deepening the trauma of gun violence and as a consequence of that violence. These are rational, common sense measures. Meanwhile, two people were shot during a funeral at Graceland Cemetery in Razin, Southeast Wisconsin Cemetery. The shooting happened during the funeral of Dashin Tay Ken, who was shot and killed by a Razin police officer two weeks ago. Mayor Cory Mason announced that he will instruct police to enforce the city's juvenile curfew through the weekend. The ordinance requires anyone under 18 to be home by 11 p.m. Police have not yet released any other information, but are looking for a video of the shooting. So far, no suspects are in custody. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. The government of the Dominican Republic warned Haiti's authorities that they will expropriate the land on which the border fence is built if they do not get a satisfactory agreement. This was announced by the national executive in view of the dispute with the landowner. According to authorities in Santo Domingo, the country can obtain the expropriation of this area if an agreement is not reached with the owner, as the area will be used to build a perimeter fence, and Decree 2922 declares it urgent that the Dominican state takes possession of the land so that the work that started in February can continue. In this regard, the Minister of Defense, Julio Florian Feliz, assured that the procedure are protected by law and reiterated the need to complete the work. It is highly important, you know, that as the border is open, it is easier to cross any kind of illegality. After the wall is there, it will be more difficult. And motorbikes and those vehicle animals, people that go through quite easily, because the border is wide and very open, well, now they will have to do it through the former crossing points. Now we address their topics. In Mexico, the National Meteorological Service, which is part of the National Weather Commission and the Water Commission also, reports that the remains of Hurricane Agatha could be drawn into Hurricane 1 in the Gulf of Mexico, northeast of the Yucatan Peninsula. According to a press release from the Meteorological Service, this potential tropical hurricane has brought heavy rains to the states of Quintana Roo, Yucatan, and the city of Campeche. Additionally, these cold detachments and the cloud detachments have intensified in the aforementioned areas. Currently, this remnant of Hurricane Agatha is located 120 kilometers north and northwest of Cozumel and 50 kilometers southwest of Cabo Gatoche in the state of Quintana Roo. In Sweden, the United Nations Secretary General called for action to tackle climate change on the first day of the Stockholm Plus 50 Summit. 
The event, which commemorates the 1972 United Nations Conference on the Human Environment and celebrates 50 years of global environmental action. During his address, Guterres called for action to tackle climate change, biodiversity loss, pollution and waste. He said all nations must do more to protect the basic human right to a clean environment, asserting that the current rate of global consumption exceeds planetary capabilities by far. During her visual intervention at the Stockholm Plus 50 International Meeting, Venezuelan Vice President Delcy Rodriguez said that this is the worst crisis of humanity and held responsible the capitalist model that has attempted against the rights of Mother Earth. The terrible environmental crisis that threatens the very existence of the human species. The main cause of this crisis, the intervention of men. The predatory production model of an exacerbated capitalism that has attacked the rise of Mother Earth. And we have more news coming up after a final short break. So stay with us. Welcome back. The Israeli occupation forces shot and killed 70 Palestinians in the occupied territories since the start of 2022. According to Mohammed Zbeyah, head of an organization representing families of Palestinians killed by Israel, the latest casualty was a 17-year-old boy, a young boy, killed on Friday in the village of Al Media near Ramallah. The head of the organization stated that among the 70 were 13 children less than 18 years of age and five women. The Jenin district had the highest number of Palestinians killed by Israel, with the number there reaching 21 people. And Chad declared a food emergency in the impoverished landlocked country, urging the international community to help. The plea for aid came ahead of the meeting on Friday between the head of the African Union and Russia's President Vladimir Putin to discuss grain supplies in the aftermath of Moscow's special military operation in Ukraine. The United Nations has warned that 5.5 million people in Chad will need humanitarian assistance this year. The World Food Program in March estimated that 2.1 million Chadians will be severely food insecure during the lean season starting in June. Russia's special military operation and Western sanctions in Moscow have disrupted the deliveries on wheat and other commodities from the two countries, fueling concerns about the risk of hunger around the world. Egypt displayed a group of ancient artifacts dating back more than 2,000 years, which the country's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities recently unearthed at Saqqara Necropolis near Cairo. The Saqqara Necropolis, a large-scale ancient cemetery that is rich in monuments in Gaza, has revealed more than its, of its hidden treasures as 250 mummies were found lying inside beautifully painted coffins at the burial area, along with dozens of pieces including cosmetics and women's accessories. But more impressive are the bronze statues, which will date back to the era of around 500 to 600 BC. The National Cultural Commission, led by Mustafa Waziri, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, has been working on this site since 2018, with a number of exceptional discoveries since then. Today, it's a very special day. Number one, because we found the biggest cache of bronze statues. They are representing the different gods and goddesses, Isis, Nephthys, Osiris, Bastet, Hathor, 150 bronze statues. Can you imagine? Those statues back to the late period. So we took about 20, 2,500 years old. We were really shocked and happy at the same time because it's one of its kind. We think that this papyrus is something like nine meters and we hope that this papyrus can contain chapters of what we call it the book of death 
which is something really very important for us. On Thursday, the Common Front, made up of five social democratic parties and the Tunisian left-wing party, launched a boycott campaign against the constitutional referendum unilaterally set by President Kais Sayed for July 25th considering it an instrument to be granted a false legitimacy and establish its authoritarian power. The participants in this initiative, Democratic Current, Popular Front, Irakarol, Workers' Party and the Modernist Democratic Poll, defended as a national duty the rejection of the supposed national dialogue, which excludes political parties and whose members have been selected by the president. On Thursday, a demonstration in Kenya against the threats posed by wildlife turned deadly when four protesters were shot dead, police informed. The protesters clashed with the security forces, resulting in the fatal shootings, Mashuru Town Police Chief Charles Shepukunga said, adding that police will investigate what happened. Thursday's demonstrations blocked the Nairobi-Mombasa highway for hours as protesters placed rocks and burning tires on the road, leading police to intervene. Now we move on to other topics. Interpol expressed serious concern about the delivery of small and heavy weapons to Ukraine that can end up in the hands of criminals in Europe. Agency head Georgian Stock urged countries supplying military equipment to Kiev to focus on tracing mechanisms. Stock said the wide availability of weapons during the current conflict will lead to the proliferation of illicit weapons by criminals in the US black market, as prices of guns are higher there. Several European countries, including France and Germany, along with the US, have delivered high-end defense equipment, artillery, munitions and guns to Ukraine. The concern came after the U.S. armed forces exceeded Afghanistan in 2021, following two decades of war, and left huge amounts of military equipment, which eventually fell into the hands of the Taliban. And the Council of the European Union approved the bloc's sixth sanctions package against Russia, with measures including partial oil embargo and the exclusion of Sberbank from the SWIFT payment system. The sanctions package included a ban on Russian seaborne oil imports that is supposed to cut 92% of Moscow's oil, the trade, into the bloc by the end of this year. It also excluded Russia's biggest bank, Sberbank, from the SWIFT international payment system and two other financial institutions, and bans three new Russian state-owned broadcasters from the EU. The package introduced travel ban and asset freeze on people belonging to the military administration. The measures will enter into force once they are officially approved by the national capitals and published in the EU official journal. And we have come to the end of this news brief. But remember, you can find this and many other stories on our website at telesurienglish.net. And also, if you feel so inclined, please join us on social media for all the latest news. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm your anchor, Gladys Quesada. Thank you for watching.